take a look at powers of monomials. Simplify, express your answer as a single term. We have n to the third power raised to the sixth power. Okay, so notice we have an exponent on an exponent, right? We're raising n to the third to the sixth power. So if we think about what that means, well remember, when we have exponents, we multiply out the base times itself the exponent number of times. So in this case, we could say, well, let's multiply out n to the third power six times. Okay, so that's two, three, four, five, six times. Okay, and then if you really wanted to, you could say, well, each one of these n to the third powers means n multiplied out three times, right? So n times n times n. So you can kind of visualize here that if I have three groups, or I'm sorry, six groups of three n's, right? Six groups of three n's would give me 18 n's, right? You could write it all the way out, or you could kind of just look at your grouping here. So that would give me n to the 18th power. Now notice, if my numbers were three and six, I could simply multiply those together to get the 18. So that is our shortcut rule, or our power to power rule, so you don't have to write this out the long way every time, which is super helpful, especially if your numbers were really big, if you had numbers like 100. So the power to power rule is when you have an exponent raised to another exponent, you can multiply those exponents together. So here we would say n to the three times six power and of course, 3 times 6 is 18, so we get n to the 18th power. Eight i to the eighth raised to the eighth. Okay, now in this case, notice I don't have just one thing. It's not just i to the eighth raised to the eighth. It's eight i to the eighth raised to the eighth power. So I want you to think about that. If I were to write this out eight times, right, eight i to the eighth times eight i to the eighth times eight i to the eighth, right, if I were to write that out eight times, I'm gonna put dot, dot, dot. Notice I would have to keep multiplying those eights together too. So it's not just the i to the eighth where I would have to multiply the exponent by eight. It's also the exponent on the regular or the whole number eight, the coefficient of eight right, meaning the number in front of the i to the eighth power. So if you're looking at that and you're thinking, but wait a minute, there is no exponent there, remember, any whole number can be written with an invisible exponent of one. So you can think of that as eight to the first power. And then when you do your power to power rule, make sure both of the exponents inside get multiplied by that eight. So we would say eight to the one times eight becomes eight to the eighth power and i to the eight times eight becomes i to the 64th power. Okay, and then with any number, you're not gonna leave it as eight to the eighth power because we can figure out what eight to the eighth power is. So you can take your calculator, raise eight to the eighth power, and that gives us a really big number. Okay, eight to the eighth power, 16,770, I'm sorry, 16,777,216. And then we would say i to the 64th power. g to the 10th raised to the third. Well, in this case, the only, I only have one base, just g. So I'm going to multiply my exponents. 10 times 3 makes that g to the 30th power. r to the 7th raised to the 6th. Okay, well my base is r, and I'm gonna multiply my exponents. Seven times six makes that the 42nd power. 10 r to the eighth raised to the ninth. Now this is one where you have to be careful because I have 10 and r as two bases in here, right? It's all being grouped or all raised to the ninth power. So this is where you wanna fill in that invisible one and think of it as 10 to the first r to the eighth, all raised to the ninth. And then we're gonna multiply both exponents by nine. 
So 10 to the 1 times 9 becomes 10 to the 9th power. And r to the 8 times 9 becomes r to the 72nd power. Okay, now for 10 to the 9th power, you don't even need a calculator for that because when you're working with 10, 10 to the 9th power would mean I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 zeros. And then it's going to be r to the 72nd power. Okay, 7v squared all raised to the 7th power. Okay, well again, remember this is like 7 to the 1st v squared all raised to the 7th power. So make sure you have your invisible 1. And then we can multiply out our exponents. Okay, so 7 to the 1 times 7 becomes 7 to the 7th. v to the 2 times 7 becomes v to the 14th. And then, of course, we can work out our number part because we can say, what is 7 raised to the 7th power? And that's going to give us a pretty big number here. 7 raised to the 7th power is 823,543. And then we're going to say V to the 14th power. Eight n squared all raised to the 8th. Well, again, make sure to fill in your invisible 1. So we're thinking of this as 8 to the 1 times 8, or 8 to the 8th power, and not an n to the 2 times 8, or n to the 16th power. And then, of course, we can simplify by figuring out what is 8 to the 8th power. So 8 raised to the 8th power, okay, that's going to give us a really big number, 16,777,000. 216, and then we have n to the 16th power. Three f to the sixth, all raised to the ninth. Okay, well, we have to make sure that power of nine goes on both the base of three and f to the sixth. So when we multiply, three to the one times nine becomes three to the ninth power, and then f to the six times nine becomes f to the 54th power. Okay, so already, well, we know f is to the 54th. It's not going to just be 3 because it's 3 to the 9th power. So it needs to be this last answer choice here. And of course, you could always double check by taking your calculator and raising 3 to the 9th power. And yes, it gives us 19,683. So altogether, 19,683 f to the 54th.